So I'm a big fan of accounts known as regular savers accounts, sometimes known as monthly savings accounts, because they are absolutely one of the best ways to ensure that you are saving every single month. And on top of that, they're generally the ones that are going to pay the highest rates of interest as well. So it's a win-win. You save every single month and you get the best possible rate of interest you possibly can. But sometimes people do get a little bit confused by this. So this video, I'll take you through how they kind of work, what they do, some of the restrictions that come into play. I'll clear up for you exactly how much interest you are going to be getting at the end of normally a year. And I'll also take you through some of the best ones available right now. But let's kick off then in just a, a very brief explanation what a regular saver is. As the name suggests, you are saving on a regular basis. And most of the time, this is again, like I said, also known as a monthly saver, saving on a monthly basis. Uh, you can set this up normally via a direct debit. When you set up the account, a direct debit is set up for that money to come out of your current account into that. But you can, if you want to have that smaller, a lower amount and top it up if you want to. But I think the best way to do this is you get paid and a couple of days after this, you send money via that direct debit into your regular saver. And it means you are prioritizing the saving uh, rather than spending. Now you can do this with any savings account by setting up a standing order. So you can you don't have to have a regular saver to do that. But this is one of the best ways to do it and it formalizes it and the money goes across. Now there are a kind of a, a few kind of restrictions often when it comes to regular savers. They do vary. Different ones work in different ways. But broadly what you're going to find is you can't just whack a lump sum in there, a huge amount. There will be a cap on how much you can put in. That can be anything from as low as 50 quid, which is a not great one. But if you, that's all you can save, then brilliant up to maybe around 500, but you'll probably find most likely it's gonna be around 200 to 250 pounds a month. That's the most you can put in. So they're ideal in lots of ways for that. Money comes in and you're putting it across a little bit extra month. If you can save more than that, fantastic. And we'll come through to some uh, ways that in a moment. But that's generally gonna be the restriction. The normally as well, and again, sometimes they vary, you're only gonna be able to have that account for 12 months. So you pay in for a year and you normally have to pay in every month. Some of them will let you skip a month, but you normally have to pay in a certain amount every single month. And sometimes there is a minimum, but you're paying for a year. And at the end of the year, you get paid your interest and the account will close. That is how the vast majority of regular savers work. Uh, that money is then moved into an easy access account, which normally isn't paying too much. So you have to make sure you keep an eye out for when that year finishes so you can move that money into a better paying account and then hopefully open up a new regular saver, maybe with the same bank, maybe with a different one, to start earning those higher rates again. Some of the banks, and a lot of these ones, will also restrict or completely rule out any uh, withdrawals during that year. So you've got to kind of think about it. And this can be a good thing if you've got a long-term savings goal. You've got to think about them as uh, putting your money aside for 12 months. And in 12 months, you'll be able to access it. Now, like I say, a lot of them do allow one or two restrictions, withdrawals. So that's not too bad. Some of them, you can treat them like an easy access account. Take the money out, put money in, whatever you want. Uh, you have to be aware, though, that the ones that do let you take money out, they might not let you put the money in. They might say, right, you've already put in 250 quid this month. If you took 250 quid out as well, you can't then put it back in later in the month. You have to wait until the next month to put that next bit of cash in. And as we explain when I get to the best ones right now, you might not be able to open up the regular saver unless you already have a current account with that bank. It might be restricted to already having, uh, you know, being an existing customer. Now that's not necessarily a, a, a rules you out. You can open up a current account. You can open up loads of current accounts. I often say here on the channel, it's good to have lots of current accounts. There are lots of offers and benefits of doing that. Uh, but sometimes I wouldn't necessarily think opening up a current account just to get the regular saver is gonna be the most efficient use of opening up a new current account there might be that you can get a different kind of reward. The Halifax Reward account, which I reviewed recently, for example, gives you five pounds a month for a free cinema ticket every month, 60 quid a year. That's more than you're gonna get with the current rates of interest on these regular savers in 12 months. So again, you can do this, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily use a regular saver as a reason to open up an account. So let's talk now about how this interest is calculated because this is where people get a little bit com confused. Uh, Let's assume that you've got a regular saver that's paying 2.5%. And just for ease of maths, let's say you're putting uh, £250 into that account every single month. So if you have £250 every month, over a year, that's three grand that you've saved in your regular saver, paying 2.5%, then you're going to assume, okay, right, I'm going to get 75 quid. That's what that would work out. 2.5% of £3,000 would be 75 quid. But you won't get that. You'll actually get much, much closer to 40 quid. And this is where people get a bit annoyed. Hang on, I haven't got my full interest rate on the money I put in. I should have 75 quid, I've got 40 quid. 
But you've got to remember that here, your money, that three grand, isn't in there for 12 months. In the first month, there's only 250 quid. In the second month, there's only 500 quid and so on. Three grand is only in the account for one month right at the end. So really what you've got to do, and this is it's hard, you can't really do this in your head, but there are calculators that help. The money saving expert regular saver calculator is really good for this. Um, there is a kind of rule of thumb, a kind of not quite, but roughly if you half the interest rate that's advertised for the regular saver and add that to the total balance you expect to put in, and then maybe a tint a bit more, then you will get a kind of an idea of actually how much you will get. So you know, 40 quid versus 75 quid, so it's just over half. Uh, and this is basically because that 250 quid, the first one you put in, that will earn that full 2.5% for 12 months. The next one that you put in in the next month, that will only earn it for 11 months, and then 10 months, nine months, and so on. So that's where people get confused. I understand why people get a bit angry about this thing. Oh, this is a rip off, this is a con. It's not, you're still getting a higher rate of interest for the months it's in there. It's just when you annualize it, when you put it over a 12 month period, then obviously that's not gonna be quite the same. But if you had 250 quid in an account paying 1% for uh, a month, then that's gonna be obviously a lot, lot, lot less than an account with at 2.5%. Uh, okay, so it does make sense. They are good ways to earn the extra bit of, of income. So I hope that that's cleared it up for you. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level, you can also drip feed money from an existing easy access account into a regular saver. So let's say you've got a lump sum of money. You have that all sitting in the best possible account you can get right now. At the time of recording this, it's Chase Bank at 1.5% for easy access. And then you remove a portion of that money, whatever the limit was on that regular saver, into that regular saver month by month. So basically it means that you are earning the amount from the regular saver, but you're also earning money uh, as much as you possibly can from an easy access account. So that's well, well worth you doing that. Don't just think oh, I'm gonna do the regular saver because the higher rate. No, you wanna get the best of both rates. Uh, you can also have more than one regular saver. There's no reason why you can't open two, three, four, five of these. Uh, obviously bear in mind though, you wanna ensure that the rates that you are getting on the regular saver is better than what you're getting on the easy access account. There's no point moving money from an easy access account paying 1.5% into a regular saver paying 1.5% or less. There's no point in doing that. You're not, you may as well leave it in that easy access account. So that's a kind of little way to, to boost your return from regular savers. Let's talk at the best ones now. And then I'll come back to you wherever I think it is worth you using them right now. The best one right now, in fact, is from two banks. It's essentially the same account. It's the digital regular saver from RBS or NatWest. You can have an account with both of those banks, effectively the same bank, have a current account with them. You need to have a current account with them. And then when you have that, you can open up the regular saver. This is paying 3.3% on the first 1,000 pounds you have saved. And this does work a little bit differently to most of the other regular savers, this one, because it doesn't close after a year. They could change the terms, they could change the rate, whatever it is, but at the moment, you'll get 3.3% on the first grand you've got saved, and that will carry on past 12 months. Now, the most you can pay into this account is 150 pounds every single month. So if you have one of each of them, that's 300 pounds a month you could put away into them, get 3.3%. Um, that would take you, if you're starting from scratch, six months of paying 150 quid, and then in month seven, you're paying 100 quid, and then stop. Don't pay anything more in after that. You'll be getting that 3.3% on a grand in each of them, um, and then just leave it like that, and it kind of sorts itself out and keeps earning you interest. They are the best ones right now, but you do need current accounts with each bank to open up the uh, respective digital regular saver. Below that, the best ones are 2.5% from Santander and 2.5% from Nationwide. Again, you need to be an existing customer of both those banks. And there is a 200 pound max you can put into those accounts. Uh, there are a couple more that pay 2%. These are the only ones effectively really, which are beating the easy access account with Chase right now. Also 2% with TSB, but it's a maximum of 125 pounds a month. Again, you have to have a current account for that. Or you could go to the Saffron Building Society, only put 50 pounds a month in there, but you don't need an account with them already, but that's a small amount of money. So they're the kind of ones which will be beating Chase right now. So what's that? That is six different accounts. And if you did have all of those, that's a hefty amount of money that you could be putting aside every single month into a regular saver, beating the best easy access account. So should you go and get these regular savers? I've waxed lyrical about how great they are for getting you in the savings habit and getting you the best interest rates. But there is a word of caution, okay? Something to just be aware of here. The rates, although they're better than what you're gonna get elsewhere, they're still quite low. And those caps that I talked about, you know, 150 quid, 200 quid, maybe even just 50 quid to put into these accounts, that's not much money. And when you put that all together, even if you're putting the most amount you possibly can in with those higher rates, 
we're not talking about life-changing amounts of money over a year. Not massive amounts of money. And then when you compare it to maybe having your money in a savings account like Chase paying 1.5%, even next down below that 1.2%, that extra you're getting for the effort isn't fantastic. It's up to you. You might want to do it. If you really want to max, make, make sure you get the best possible rate, then open up, go to town, go and open up loads of them, put as much as you can into them if you can afford it. Um, but I would say right now, it's probably more a case of if you already have the current accounts that give you the eligibility to get a regular saver, then yeah, why not? But do not open up a current account just to get access to these regular savers because you're not making much money. You want to prioritize other benefits that pay more money. Halifax reward five pounds a month, for example. That is a much, much better option in my view than getting 20 quid, 10 quid extra interest in a year. But I think we will see changes. There is an anticipation, although not necessarily a guarantee, that the Bank of England will increase base rates again as the year goes on. And if that happens, rates are going to increase across the board, particularly, I think, with these regular savers continuing to be the best ones out there. And they may, in turn, not just increase the rate, but they might also increase how much you can save into them. And that will, again, give you much, much bigger returns. So keep an eye on those. Obviously, I'll do my monthly updates. So make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already so you know when those videos go across. But for now, if you've got the accounts, go for it. Otherwise, prioritize different ones. But certainly, my pick of the ones at the moment is that NatWest or RBS. And you can have both of those uh, because paying 3.3% on up to a grand is going to be very, very hard to beat. If you want to watch more videos about savings, check out these ones here. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching.